Today we witness the Blue Belly Genesis Fire Core in its natural environment deep, deep under the Caspian Sea. Notice how it does not interact with the other fire core in the area, for it is a far superior fire core, bred for greater things. In short, the Genesis Fire Core is a snobby, snobby. Retro Rock plays everything. Ask not why Pac-Man is on the cover of the Sega Genesis Ultimate Portable Game Player. Ask why the heck not. Yep, today we're looking at the Sega Genesis Ultimate Portable Game Player. Those of you who were here at the genesis of this station will know that I reviewed something very similar to it. Very similar, in fact, the same platform, but with less games. We're going to look at the modernized version of it that I got at Menards for like 40 bucks or something like that. No, I think it was 35 I can't remember. I bought it a while ago. Anywho, it looks pretty interesting. Let's take a look at the box. The old box is fancier. It actually used to have like a uh, magnetic opening or a Velcro opening, but it was uh, a bit more solid of a box. You know, this is an unboxing, so we can talk about the box here. We care. All right, so 85 built-in games instead of the 20 of the original. The cover looks interesting with, of course, Pac-Man, which I alluded to earlier. Uh, Mortal Kombat, some other stuff. There is Pac-Man there, so there is a Pac-Man game. Sides are uninteresting. The top says at games, which means this is going to be a fire core device, which means the sound will probably be pretty off. Shows many of the games included... Hey, Alien Storm's on here. Alex Kidd, I like that game too. Uh, Bonanza Brothers, there's some good games in here, according to this. So uh, I think we'll open it up and take a look. One sticky tab. And there it is. Well, that looks amazingly like... The Atari <laughs> Portable. Probably because it's made by the same company. does have a different color scheme though, which is a little bit more uh, Sega Genesis-y. But this is... Uh, <laughs> great. This is pretty much exactly the same device as the old uh, Sega Genesis handheld. Just, I think, with more uh, stuff. I mean, more games on it. Also, I think the other one included, you know, something to plug it in with. This just comes with this cable and, and a manual. And the manual has... Uh, actually, look at that. I'll be darned. Look, it actually has instructions for the games. Look at that. Well, no complaints there. It's nice to see a full manual. I'll be darned. I mean, it's not like perfect. It just shows you game controls in most cases and a little description of the game, but much better than what you get in many. So not too bad. And here we have the device itself. D-pad. Six buttons to emulate all those great buttons that you had if you had a Genesis with the upgraded controller, which I didn't when I was younger. Headphone jack. Nothing on this side. SD card reader. Yep. <laughs> Look at that. <sighs> SD card reader. Uh, yeah, you can actually play games off SD cards. I'll grab one off my other Genesis player and uh, we'll test that out. Okay, let's talk about ports, buttons, and lights. I know I covered this a little bit earlier, but I want to do a little bit better job of that for you. Let's look at the top of the unit. Here we have the power light. AV out. Note that is AV out, not headphone out. This hooks with a cable to your television set. It's composite out. And note that the cable doesn't come with a device. So you're going to have to buy your own, which is kind of a bummer. I have one, though, so I'll show you that in a little bit. USB charge port. That is a mini, not a micro. So be careful about that. That's not the kind you have on your phone generally, unless you have a really old phone. SD card reader, the SD card here is not included. Volume control. Down at the bottom we have the headphone jack. Finally, the power 
button. Actually, it's a power slider switch. Up at the top here, we have a spot for a lanyard if you'd like to put a lanyard on. It has six buttons. They all work very nicely. They've had some time to perfect this design. Uh, these plastics, they feel very solid in the hand. It, it's not like a heavy device, but it doesn't feel cheap either. The D-pad's the same. It is a completely functional D-pad. No complaints. It's definitely not uh, low-end Famiclone quality. You know, I'm not saying that this is like a perfect device by any means, but the button quality is there. It's not going to get in your way. As far as these two buttons go, this is the start and pause button, and this one's the menu button, which you have to be careful of because... It can get you out of a game at any time. So if you accidentally hit it, it will bring you to the main menu. Not a huge deal breaker or anything. It's, it's stiff enough that it's not easy to accidentally press. But note that if you accidentally press it, you will go back to the main menu and you will lose your game. There's only a few games here that actually do save and that is the adventure games on it. So you might want to note that as well. Your Sonic progress will not be saved. You're going to have to play through that sucker one hit. Pretty awesome if you do that. Of course, this lists all the games. I will do that in a little bit. And there is SD card. This screen is very nice and bright. However, oh, the sound. Let's get... Uh, Let's do Kid Chameleon here. And I'm going to turn up the volume a little bit. There's a reason why I have the volume down. Yeah. That sound is the sound of butt. That is really a terrible, <laughs> terrible sound. Some games it's not so bad on, honestly. But on some of the louder games, you know, that have music playing, you get that, you know, like, I'm going to turn it down because it really is pretty bad. You get that ch -ch -ch, and it's kind of a combination of fire cars, uh, fire cores emulation and the fact that this has a really kind of crappy speaker. It is very loud, which is a positive, but the thing is, you don't want to listen to it loud. That said, in the middle range, it's bearable, but not great. All right, let's go plug this in. I'll go through the list of games and show you how the SD works. Alright, so here we are at the main menu. And using the D-pad, pressing up goes up one ROM, down goes down one ROM, pressing left goes back a menu, and pressing right goes forward a menu. You will not believe how many takes it took me to get that right. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, pressing start will start a game. Uh, so that's a pretty easy menu system and it's common across all the fire cores and pretty much every Famiclone on Earth. Let's jump forward a little bit. As you can see, there's a wide selection of Genesis games on here, but there's also something else. There are games that are made for the fire core. Yeah, the hardware that the Genesis emulator on here is running on. So this is made specifically for this hardware. These games are generally of lower quality than the Genesis games. By generally, I mean almost entirely. There are a couple good ones. I'm going to show you Break the Fire Line in a little bit. That's actually pretty good. Another thing you're going to notice, this isn't exactly in alphabetical order. It starts in alphabetical order, occasionally gets back into alphabetical order, but then just breaks right out of it again. So I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, note that... Uh, it, it doesn't just like break from going from Genesis games to Firecore games. At the end here, you can see it goes back into Genesis games again. But the selection is pretty good. There's some rarities in here. So it's definitely worth checking out. Of course, a lot of you will want to see the SD card. So let's go take a look at the SD card right now. Okay, so on the SD card... You can press start just like any of the games to get there. It will search your entire SD card. It doesn't seem to be picky about what it's formatted at. I would guess NTFS probably doesn't work, but uh, pretty much everything else seems to work. Uh, I used XFAT 
FAT16, FAT32, those all seem to work on it. It's not terribly picky about the ROMs either. Some of these are in bin format and some of these are dot uh, MD. So it picks up both of those. Note, this is a Sega CD, but Sega CD stuff does not run on it. It didn't work, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Makes me want to cry too, though. Um, you might want to be careful how you name them. I mean, it's not picky about capitals or lowercase, but you might want to make sure it's in a format, unlike these, that looks good and is fully readable on the device. Because as you can see, we're just I'm just missing half the titles here. Um, another thing, if you have things in subdirectories, don't worry about it. It does search subdirectories. I've got some of these in a subdirectory and some of these on the root. Seems to work just fine. So no big deal there too. So really remarkably unpicky, which is much better than many of the uh, you know, like the Chinese produced ones, which can be very finicky about what they'll read. All right, so yeah, basically you just drag them onto the card. There's nothing special about it. And boom, pop it in the machine and you can play them. I mean, that easy. Have had very minimal problems with it, which is to be expected. And it's, you know, it's pretty good. Come on. Dynamite Heady. I'm terrible at this, by the way. This is, uh, I think the first time I played this, like, on a video. And I've only played it a couple times. I heard about it in one of those articles uh, that, you know, great unheard of Sega Genesis games. I just decided to try it out. Alright, here we go. Kill him! Kill him! Kill him! As you can see though, I mean, the stuff runs full speed. I'm not noticing any lag at all. It plays really well. I'm hooked up to a monitor too, so it plays, you know, plays okay. And I'm sure they didn't really expect you to run this game on it, although I would expect that uh, Genesis, <laughs> Genesis uh, emulation is probably at a level where you don't have to worry about it too much anymore. Get over here, butter. Uh oh. And there's a big conversation. Okay. Hitting back, of course, gets you back to the main menu. We can look at, let's look at. I am not going to do Bonanza Brothers again. I think I've done that before. I've also done Comic Zone on this, so I'm going to skip that. Let's do Golden Axe. The original one. Sega. And we'll just do arcade. Select your player. And death adder. Oops. Pfft. Accidental press. One thing to note is that the buttons are in a slightly different order. There we go. Uh, than they are in the Genesis. I don't mean like, it, I shouldn't say order. I should say that they are vertical, kind of, as opposed to horizontal, like the original. And it can throw you off a little bit about placement, but you get used to it. And the buttons work well enough, and the D-pad works well enough, so. Not too bad kind of a low energy episode. Sorry about that. I've not had enough coffee yet today. Oh, you little bastard. Get over here. There. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Free stuff. You know, you give me that little monster. I used to play this on this system or did I play it on the uh, 
the Amiga. I wonder if they had this for the Amiga. I'll have to go look that up. Ha ha! And now I've got the sick little bird thing to beat people up with. Yeah. Go, go, go! Free stuff. That was crap. I keep accidentally pressing this because it's it's not where I expect it to be. All right, so I think you get the idea on that one. Let's try one of the games that was made for the fire core and this one's called break the fire line if i didn't mention it it's a little bit of a space invaders clone and it's not believe it or not it's really not too bad except i'm bad at it man what was up with that oh, come on i don't know what happened there <laughs> I don't know what happened. I died like twice at the beginning and then a bunch disappeared. Look, look at how it just goes like all the way towards you. That was a bunch of crap and it didn't do that the last couple times I played it. What is up with that? Weird. See, look at it. <laughs> Maybe I didn't stay in the corner as much. There we go, extra life. That UFO went really fast, you notice that? Or the mother chip? It was crazy. So there is an example of a fire core game. And that's uh, pretty much indicative of what's on there for those. Not uh, necessarily the greatest stuff on Earth. <laughs> I think that's pterodactyl spotting. Yawning. There, there's something you want to see in a game. Yawning. Triceratops. Great. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to play it. Not going to play Not going to play it. I refuse. I thought the, hey, let's try wall breaking. Could have swore the uh, snake game wasn't too bad either. Oh, that was crap. I suppose I could just do this. There we go. This isn't too bad. I mean, I know it doesn't look great, but it's not too bad to play, honestly. Really, dude? Come on. Ugh. Hmm. It's a little yawny, but it plays okay. <laughs> Spawn camping. 1990 style. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Let's do one more Genesis game on here. Well, do, let's do Arrow Flash. I don't think I've done that on one of these videos either. Arrow Flash! I can't actually hear the game, so, you know, I'm just kind of making up my own. It's those quality extras that you get from me when I'm doing these reviews. Wow. This is nice. Mm. Yeah, I like this. I think I have played this game before on 
this uh, station, but you know what? This is pretty good. I like it. And I can transform. Look at it. Nice. Game over. Yeah, I really like that one. Not too bad. All right, let's wrap it up and uh, talk final, <laughs> final opinion on this. So what is the verdict on the Genesis Ultimate Portable Game Player? Well, the name's way too freaking long for one thing. Uh, <laughs> but most of the rest of it's done pretty well. The construction in general is high quality. The plastics are nice. It feels very solid in your hands. There is no, there's no real chintz to be found in the actual physical construction of it. The buttons work really well. So does the D-pad. You might want to notice that these buttons are a little bit small and that might cause you a problem or two. The screen is really clear, very bright, and keeps up with the games. I detected almost no lag, if any at all. It plays games really well. The screen's a little bit small though. You might want to note if you're older like me, <laughs> you might notice that. All right, let's talk about the sound. The sound is horrible, to be frank. Um, this speaker is, it's just horrendous. I don't think I've heard anything this distorted in years. Uh, and I, you know, I review Famiclones all the time and their handheld Famiclones are not known for their great sound. This thing at the highest range sounds awful. In the mid range, it's okay, but not great. I'll put it into the TV, it sounds fine to me. Now I know there's some nitpickers out there that uh, are gonna say that the sound isn't quite right and they're absolutely right about that, but it's not terrible. But in this device, on this device, the sound is indeed terrible. Get yourself some headphones. I'm just saying, uh, the, if you're gonna get this, that's just awful. All right, let's wrap it up with battery life and a note on video output. Uh, battery life seems to be about three hours, a little bit more sometimes, a little bit less sometimes. Just depends on what you're playing on the system and how intensive it is. I like the fact that they made the battery swappable so you could order a new battery and replace it once this one wears out. That's very nice. Let's not fill the landfills with these things. Great. Um, video out. Look, I appreciate that they included video out, but if you're going to include video out and call this thing like the ultimate portable, please, please throw in the cable. It doesn't cost an OEM much to get those cables. Include them. Jeez, I mean... I just don't understand why they don't do that. I realize it shaves off like 50 cents or something, but on these where you're charging a whole bunch of money for it, well, not a whole bunch, but I mean, you're charging like 50 bucks for this. I expect to get a video out cable with it. I'm just saying. All in all, I do like this device quite a bit. Its durability really helps it. And the fact that it has really good controls propel it a long way in my opinion. That said, I think the price is a little bit high for what they throw in there. Um, wait to get it on sale. If you can get it for like 30, 35 bucks, I think you're gonna be getting a lot better deal and you're gonna be a lot happier with it. So thumbs up, but conditional thumbs up based on price. Thank you very much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more and tell your friends. I will see you in a couple days, bye. Retro Rocks Gaming Videos